Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Talk About Rock. I'm Rob Edwards. This week after Memorial Day, I hope you all enjoyed a great weekend. So we have a special guest for you today. From the band Iron Flame, we have Andrew Cagna. Andrew, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, man. How are you? Excellent, excellent. So you guys have a new album coming out July 1st. Uh, High Roller Records is coming out on. Uh, it's called Where Madness Dwells. Tell us a little bit about the uh, new offering you guys have for us. Um, I think it's uh, definitely a more back to basic stripped down heavy metal album compared to the albums we've done in the past. Um, there's definitely a, a noticeable shift in the songwriting to where we uh, rely a lot less on guitar harmonies as the main hooks for songs. And we went for a more riff based uh, approach with things. Um, it's definitely a bit of an angrier album. Uh, 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 definitely more pissed off than anything we've done before. <laughs> and, um, yeah, but I've been listening to it to, to, for the last couple of days, and there's definitely a lot because uh, I read some of your bio and stuff. How, how some of the earlier albums you guys had actually written kind of on the fly as you were recording it, and there's just yeah. seems to be a lot, a lot uh, more, you know, deeper, richer songwriting quality to this one. Like yeah. you, you put a lot of time and and thought about what what you wanted to say before, and I, and I think that's definitely reflected. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I think that uh, musically we approach it the same way, and um, almost all of Iron Flame's music is kind of made up uh, off the cuff uh, and kind of starts with one, one riff and just turns into a song from there, and we just build it as we go. But um, yeah, lyrically, I've always tended to just kind of, I don't want to say phone it in, but um, just, I think lyrics are a chore. They're really tough and I have a hard time writing them. So a lot of times I'll just commit to the first thing that comes in my head and that's the lyrics. But um, this time around, yeah, I definitely put a lot more thought into the lyrical content, into the overall, I don't want to say concept, but more like the overall theme of the album is madness in um, all of its various shapes and forms and I kind of deal with that from song to song to song in um, different ways and I never really uh, yeah put that kind of thought into my lyrics up until this point so yeah that I think that's the biggest difference and you can definitely feel you know like I said I read your bio you can definitely feel the uh, the Iron Maiden influence you know definitely uh, through the music and through some of the changes, uh, but, I, but I'm really digging it. I really like it. So we're going to take a quick pause here, and we're going to actually play the video for Kingdom of Lies from uh, the album Where a Madness Dwells from Iron Flame here on Talking About Rock, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Ride. Their desolation feeds their conquest. 
okay we're back here just checked out the video for kingdom of lies great stuff man so are you going to have some more stuff coming out for that obviously the album gets released what would be tomorrow so are you going to have some more uh videos on the way uh yeah well yeah july 1st the album comes out um well and um there's going to be another video a visualizer video for the song uh a funeral within um to follow kingdom of lies and then uh that will be followed by a actual uh performance video for the song ready to strike uh that'll come out like directly before the album drops so so tell us a little bit about the rest of the guys in the band there how how, the, how that came about so these these are mostly newer members for you i think um i've had well the the band has been a live entity since 2017 and uh it is only we've changed out one guitar player and our drummer and uh we started out with todd guerreri playing drums jim dofka playing lead guitar and um eventually both of those guys just had to bow out due to just life circumstances they couldn't uh, right. you know uh commit to the band so uh no hard feelings there but um so uh jim got replaced by jesse scott who used to play in a melodic metal band called defy the tide um and uh noah skiba uh, replaced todd um on drums and uh noah i've known for a very long time he's a local musician here um and, and i recorded him a handful of time in different bands um and i've known all these guys for years so uh nobody like came in cold and was not a friend before they joined the band right right and you've you've got a lot of other products going on too you're still with uh brimstone coven and icarus witch right those are still active progress uh, projects for you yeah uh brimstone's been around since 2011 and i'm a i'm an original member of that and uh yeah i joined icarus witch in 2018 um well yeah between 2017 and 2018 and uh yeah so both of those are still very much active live bands we've got shows peppered all throughout the summer and did you play did you play most of the instruments on this on this album as that was recording i think that's what i was reading yeah on iron as far as iron flame goes that's the formula that's been uh in place since the project started was i i record all the instruments the vocals the guitars bass and drums and then um everything but guitar solos basically because that's one thing that i'm not very good at not your forte so, gotcha yeah. gotcha so and you were originally what were you originally drumming before or or were you always singing yeah, on all on all of the iron flame albums that's me playing drums as well as the guitars and the bass and everything okay um and then the the ever since the the live lineup has been solid like for the past couple of years i've had my live guitar players jesse and quinn um compose and record all their own guitar solos on, on each album so that that's been happening for the past two albums basically now was was this something you guys kind of had to put on hold because of uh the COVID restrictions and stuff and you recorded this a little while ago and it was kind of waiting in the yeah, wings I mean, to come it, out it, yeah it affected us as much as anybody else and um well the album that came out before this one blood red victory got released like a month before the pandemic struck so um we didn't really even get a chance to promote that in any way other than the internet um and so we tried as best we could we did a couple of live streams from our rehearsal space and i was doing like little um little impromptu uh videos on instagram and things like that just um focusing on each song and um, doing everything we could just to raise awareness for the album because we couldn't promote it otherwise through live shows so um uh, yeah uh like I said, it happened pretty much right after that album came out. And as a result, I was, well, I didn't have anything to do like anybody else. I was stuck in, inside the house. Right, and, right. Um, so many artists have talked to us and they, they, I mean, that's why we're seeing so much, so much stuff being released now. There were so many stuff in the works or even stuff done. And they're like, well, we're, we're not going to do anything with it. We're, we're going to wait till this passes till we can start putting, you know, PR out and figuring out and, yep. if we're going to tour and stuff. And Yep. And now you're seeing like all kinds of folks like like you know going out on tour, you know, Scorpions and White Snake and Oh yeah. Now um, the floodgates have opened and it's right. actually tough to find a, a an empty spot now. All these bands are vying for the same venues and the same dates and 
you know, where I'm seeing it here and I'm sure everybody's seeing it everywhere to where, uh, you know, you're like, oh man, there's three bands that I want to see and they're all coming through uh, either my town or close to my town. And I have to decide which one I, I want to go to because, <laughs> you know, there's three shows happening on the same night. And that's probably going to be happening for another 18 months, probably till that, you know, that wave dies down, you know? Yeah, so. this is definitely gearing up to be, uh, I think a really, a really hot summer for concerts and, and artists. You know, let's, let's hope it's not dampened by, you know, the crazy gas prices and some other stuff that's going on. You know, yeah. let's, hope, let's hope we can have, you know, a, a, a nice, uh, you know, concert uh, summer and, and get to see a few different acts. It's a little different in my day, you know, tickets were so much cheaper back then. You could see, you sure. know, five or six bands every summer. It, was, it wasn't that bad. Now you got to kind of right. pick and choose. Right. You know what I mean? Depending on what top acts you want to see coming through, you know, we have the obviously have the stadium tour coming through here. So we're going to be seeing that uh, coming up this summer. Uh, actually, this week we're going to have um, L.A. Guns, Faster Pussycat, and Buffalo's Own Hair Nation will play in the Showplace Theater in Buffalo. So that'll be a cool, that'll be a nice show to see. Oh yeah, um, we've seen some cool acts come through there. Stephen Percy was there a couple months ago. Firehouse, uh, Slaughter. So like you said, the floodgates <laughs> floodgates are open, and oh, yeah. uh, and it's 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 definitely coming. Um, yep. Do you guys have some plans on deck and? kind of put out some feelers to, to, to see what you're going to do after the release. Oh yeah. I mean, we've been active ever since the weather broke. We've been, uh, we've been active since March, basically doing little weekend mini tours. And we played uh blades of steel metal festival up in uh, Milwaukee in the end of March. And um, uh, we we're playing a festival in Pittsburgh on Friday, Descendants of Crom. Then the week after that, we'll be up in New England in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts for um, Stormbringer Festival. That's going to be the first year for that festival. And then at the end of July, we'll be in Germany playing um, Headbangers Open Air Festival. So, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff lined up for the summer. Excellent. Excellent. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit of everything. So we actually wanted to play some of that footage that you guys had from uh, the Blades of Steel Metal Fest from Milwaukee there. We got some video for that we wanted to pipe in for the folks to check on here from uh, Iron Flame. And we'll be right back here on Talking About Rock. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, we're back here on Talking About Rock. Just checked out the video for Seekers of the Blade. So, so that had to be a nice, uh, nice uh, metal fest there, Blades of Steel Metal Fest. Who, who else was performing there? Oh, man, there was a ton of great bands. Tox Toxic Headlines that night. Um, who else played there? Nun Slaughter. It was a really well-balanced bill because there was um, there were death metal bands, there were black metal bands, there were traditional heavy metal bands. Uh, the band Damien played that night. Uh, the band Wraith. Um, yeah, it, it, it was a, a really varied bill, and those are the types of bills that I like personally. I don't want to go see the same band four times in a row or right, three right. times in a and, row. And, and, and how and how is it how is it for those metal fests? I know, like, like it's really tough for rock fans right now, but it's even tougher for metal fans right now. You know what I mean? There's not there's not usually a big a big crowd or a big following for that. How how are the how are the shows holding up and how are the crowds for that? Well, I think post pandemic, it's a completely different story, and everybody is just has been so pent up for so long that you know normally people that would stay home and not go to a show are are there and attending because everyone's got cabin fever from being right. Pent up. That's true. Very very true. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's a definitely a different attitude and a different scene than it was pre-pandemic, just because of the whole um, lockdown aspect of everything. Yeah, you're you're definitely seeing everybody out, and um, uh, it's cool to see uh, bands and bills like that with so many different um, styles that are getting equally appreciated, and not, you know, like well, when when uh, you know a metal band takes the stage, like all the death metal people walk away or you know right versa, you know everything's really equally appreciated I, I i'm noticing and um that's how i feel i like i like all uh, all different styles of metal mm -hmm. um, and, and you uh, still get a good mixture in your crowd of of, of younger demographic and, and older or would you still say it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely age? primarily you know my age you know mm -hmm. like you know, mid-40s or whatever i think it's definitely primarily my age but no there's yeah there's definitely a a, a healthy influx of younger younger kids that are into this stuff and uh, you know it it's it, it's easier to get turned on to music nowadays than it was when you and I were kids I right mean, you know we, we had to rely on friends and older yeah. brothers and, yeah it's it's, yeah. it's 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 totally different yeah yeah it's totally different but but I, I go to a lot of shows in the area so I'm always I always stop and talk to the younger guys and you know ask them what got them into this or what bands you know are they following because it's always great to see that, you know, and I know I know the artists really appreciate that. And they always they always seem to take the time and see some of the younger guys in there and say, you know, we really appreciate because that's the next generation of uh, rock fans. Right. Oh, those, those are the folks we want. Those are the folks we we, we want to impress and we want to see them at our shows. Definitely. For yeah. Sure. And, and, and you're right. It's 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 definitely changed so much how it used to be when, when, when we were growing up, right? Your, your friend would have a cassette or something and you'd hear something like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, or you'd record it or you'd go out and buy it or something like that. Yeah, you it know? was basically like word of mouth or a magazine maybe. Or yeah. or if you remember back in the day, you go over to somebody's house and you go play records, right? You bring your records and they, they right. bring theirs and you just hang out, you know? And, sure. and now it's now it's like, it's not like that. It's like, no, you know, what's, what's uh, you know, what's uh, on Spotify? What's, what's the highest fate's trending song on spotify or what's trending yeah, well, here and, or... and all you have to do is read read a name somewhere and it's you know their whole discography is one click away you know so uh it, it's it's not like you're not hunting through uh you know, record stores and buying albums based on the cover art anymore and I, yeah i was just talking to that about somebody today i would spend hours in the record stores right because you only had enough for maybe one or two albums so you were going right. through tons of stuff you know, yeah. you bought that one cool album that had the cool, the cool cover or cool concept, and you were sitting there looking at it as you're listening to the music, seeing if it that reflected in the music somehow what the concept was about. It was it was an experience to buy oh, a yeah, new album, absolutely. you know. Yeah, and now absolutely. it's now it's just like okay, I'll yeah, for a couple seconds. Yeah, maybe I don't like it. Oh, next one, you know. The attention right. span is just it's just oh, not yeah. there. I know the and and there's so many bands too, and so much music that you know the competition is super fierce and like you just said you know attention spans are shorter than they've ever been in the history of ever you know so um it's it's really tough to get somebody to notice you enough to you know get into your music just to give you the time of day for it to sink into 
you know, know whether they like it or not, <laughs> you know, because like you said, 15 seconds and, you know, the average listener is on to the next thing. So, uh, yeah, it's tougher than ever before. But circling back to the younger generation, you know, I know, um, you know, I have uh, a couple of my friends are guitar instructors and, you know, they they say that there is no shortage of talented youth coming in and well, the, ne uh, the next time you see him tell him we all thank god for that because absolutely you know. <laughs> oh yeah because it can't continue without them that's for sure yeah because it didn't seem like that was the way for a while it didn't seem like you know you don't have any of those uh those rock guitar players that you you know strive to want to be like there's no you know rock god icons or you know amazing guitar players anymore it seems like that maybe that day is gone maybe it'll come back i i don't know I don't know if it ever will, but I, I've noticed that, you know, uh, I guess on the uh, opposite end of things that kids and just musicians in general are just coming out of the gate way more talented than ever before. You know, like before when somebody came out, a guitar player came out and he was 17 and he was awesome. Like that was, uh, that was unheard of. That was, they were like a, year, they were like was a, a unicorn. unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> so but now um totally not the case i mean and just so many kids now are just coming out like naturally amazingly skilled and talented and um i don't know I, like I, that's what i've noticed that with these younger generations somehow some way they're just coming out more naturally gifted well that, um, that's that's really really so good to hear because you know folks my age we're all afraid this music is going to go away in the next you know five to ten years and I, I'm not sure what's what's going to be happening next or, ho you know, hopefully there's a no, whole other generation of rock folks that are going to, you know, bring it forward. That's what we're hoping. Right on. You know, so so folks want more information about you or they want to look up the band or what should they do? Should they check you out on Facebook or YouTube? Yeah, we're YouTube? on all the, the normal stuff. Yeah, yeah. we're on um, Facebook. You can that's a, uh, Iron Flame USA on Facebook, we're Iron Flame Official on Instagram. Um, you can find us all over YouTube, all over Spotify, all over Apple Music, um, all those streaming platforms you can find us on, no problem. Just You just wanna remember um, if you're not reading it and you're just hearing it, the name Iron Flame is all one word, Iron Flame. Good to know, cool, cool. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today, Andrew, about Iron Flame and the new release coming out July 1st. Uh, we're Madness dwells from, from uh, High Roller Records. So we look yeah. forward to that. We look forward to seeing you guys out on the road, maybe catching your show. That would be excellent. It would be so great. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yep. So if you folks out there have comments or questions about us, feel free to email us at talkingaboutrock at gmail.com. Please like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And please, we really can use your subscription on YouTube so we can keep bringing you more interesting rock and roll interviews. Andrew, again. Thank you for being with us. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. You got it, man. Have a great night. Thanks. You too.